Howdy. Today I'm going to read Mosiah 18. Sorry, I'm hunched over like this, but I can't see myself from over here if I sit up straight. So just bear with me until I start reading. Before I begin, I'd like to ask you to hit pause and say a prayer. Ask for discernment so you can get as what you're supposed to. Don't forget to take notes if anything jumps out at you or, you know, seems like it's weird or you want to know more about it, so you can pray about it. Uh, whatever. Take notes. If you want to follow along online, there's a link we can do that in the description. And there's another link that you can use to request your own physical copy of the Book of Mormon. I don't have the one I normally read from, just like I didn't last week, because it's in one of my cars that's not near me, but it'll be similar to this one that you get in the mail if you request it from the church. If you don't want to request one from the church, but you still want one, but from me, you can send an email to thetruthaboutwaffles at gmail.com, and I'll put my testimony on the blank page that's on the inside cover, or on the inside cover, either one, or both, whatever. Uh, there's another link in the description you can use to download the Gospel Library app, which gives you access to the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, New Testament, Old Testament, conference talks, all kinds of stuff. Manuals, if you want to read those. And I'm distracted because there are ants here. I don't understand why there's ants in my living room. There's like nothing for them to eat. I don't even know where they're coming from. So, a little bit irritated. But, yeah, I think those are all the announcements. So this is Mosiah chapter 18, from one of my classic books of Mormon. And now it came to pass that Alma, who had fled from the servants of King Noah, repented of his sins and iniquities, and went about privately among the people, and began to teach the words of Abinadi, yea, concerning that which was to come, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead, and the redemption of the people, which was to be brought to pass through the power and suffering, sufferings, plural, and death of Christ, and his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as many as would hear his word, he did teach, and he taught them privately, that it might not come to the knowledge of the king. And many did believe his words, and it came to pass that as many as did believe him did go forth to a place which was called Mormon, having received his name from the king, being in the borders of the land, having been infested by times or at seasons by wild beasts. Now, there was in Mormon a fountain of pure water, and Alma resorted to there, there being near the water a thicket of small trees, where he did hide himself in the daytime from the searches of the king. And it came to pass that as many as believed him went thither to hear his words. And it came to pass, after many days, there were a goodly number gathered together at the place of Mormon to hear the words of Alma. Yea, all were gathered together and believed on his word to hear him. And he did teach them, and he Oh, and did preach unto them repentance and redemption and faith on the Lord. And it came to pass, he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon, for thus were they called. I mean, otherwise he'd be a liar, right? He could be like, Behold, these are the great lakes, JK. They're the waters of Mormon. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens, that they might be light... Yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places, that ye may be in, even, that ye may be in, even until death, that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord? as a witness before him, that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his spirit more abundantly upon you. And now, when the people had heard these words, they clapped their hands for joy, and exclaimed, This is the desire of our hearts. And now it came to pass that Alma took Helam, Helam he being one of the first, and went and stood forth in the water and cried, saying, O Lord, pour out thy spirit upon thy servant, that he may do this work with holiness of heart. And when he had said these words, 
the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he said, Helam, I baptize thee, having authority from the Almighty God, as a testimony that ye have entered into a covenant to serve him until ye are dead, as to the mortal body. And many, oh, and may the Spirit of the Lord be poured out upon you, and may he grant unto you eternal life through the redemption of Christ, whom he has prepared from the foundation of the world. And after Alma had said these words, both Alma and Helam were buried in the water. And they arose and came forth out of the water, rejoicing, being filled with the Spirit. And again Alma took another and went forth a second time into the water and baptized him according to the first. And only he did not bury himself again in the water. And after this manner he did baptize everyone that went forth to the place of Mormon, and they were, in number, about two hundred and four souls. Yea, and they were baptized in the waters of Mormon, and were filled with the grace of God. And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized with the power and authority of God was added to his church. And it came to pass that Alma, having authority from God, ordained priests, even one priest to every fifty of their number, did he, did he ordain to preach unto them and to teach them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he commanded them that they should teach nothing save it were the things which he had taught, and which had been spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. Yea, even he commanded them that they should preach nothing save it were repentance and faith in the Lord, who had redeemed his people. And he commanded them that there should be no content... Sorry, almost said that one wrong. That there should be no contention one with another, but that they should look forward with one eye, just the one, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love, one towards another. And thus he commanded them to preach, and thus they became the children of God. And he commanded them that they should observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, and also every day they should give thanks to the Lord their God. And he also commanded them that the priests whom he had ordained should labor with their own hands for their support. And there was one day in every week that was set apart that they should gather themselves together to teach the people and to worship the Lord their God, and also, as often as it was in their power, to assemble themselves together. And the priests were not to depend upon the people for their support, but for their labor they were to receive the grace of God, that they might wax strong in the Spirit, having the knowledge of God, that they might teach with power and authority from God. And again Alma commanded that the people of the church should impart their substance, should impart of their substance, every one according to that which he had. If he have more abundantly, he should impart more abundantly. And of him that had but little, but little should be required. And to him that not should be given. And to him that had not, and to him that had not should be given. Not just some random person getting chipped. And thus they should impart of their substance, of their own free will and good desires towards God. And to those priests that stood in need, yea, and to every needy, naked soul. And, he, and this he said unto them, having been commanded of God, that they did walk uprightly before, before God, imparting to one another, both temporally and spiritually, according to their needs and their wants. And now it came to pass that all this was done in Mormon, yea, by the waters of Mormon, and the forest that was near the waters of Mormon, yea, the place of Mormon, the waters of Mormon, the forests of Mormon. How beautiful are they to the eyes of them who there came to the knowledge of their Redeemer, yea, and how blessed are they, for they shall sing to his praise forever. And these things were done in the borders of the land, that they might not come to the knowledge of the king. But behold, it came to pass that the king, having discovered a movement among the people, sent his servants to watch them. Therefore, on the, on the day that they were assembling themselves together to hear the word of the Lord, they were discovered unto the king. And now the king said that Alma was stirring up the people to rebellion against him. Therefore he sent his army to destroy them. And it came to pass that Alma and the people of the Lord were apprised of the coming of the king's army. Therefore they took their tents and their families and departed into the wilderness. And they were in number about 450 souls. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you all liked the videos that I put in between last week's reading and this one.
the original content. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that, but this week was kind of tough to do that on account of I've had to work 10 hour days, but we'll see what we can do tomorrow and this weekend and the week going forward. But yeah, thanks for watching.